Thanks for tuning in guys, it's the Pest and Lawn Ginger and this is What's Wrong With My Lawn? <laughs> Here at What's Wrong With My Lawn, the ginger comes out and diagnoses lawns just like yours so you can get a better idea of how to slay that lawn. Well, we're gonna take my five step diagnostic approach where we look at overall pattern, overall color, water saturation, a debris test, and a pull test to give us our final diagnostics in each one of these problem areas. But it all starts with a walkthrough. So here in our walkthrough, our front yard looks like it has an overall consistent pattern broadcast through the entire area. Overall, it's looking pretty bleak. When we get in the lawn, you can see the color itself is extremely white. I've got patches of brown with a little bit of sporadic color in between. Moving on to the side yard, we've got a little bit of the same problem. Overall, just a little bit sparse. So it looks like the front and the side, we have an overall broadcast pattern, meaning it's even across the plane in the front yard. The backyard, however, is a different beast. You'll notice that we've got a couple different bald spots, one here, one over there. Overall color and pattern has actually changed. There's a lot more green back here than there is brown, like the front yard. So we're gonna have to treat the backyard completely uh, with a different approach than we would the front yard. Spring can prove to be a difficult time to diagnose lawns because the grass isn't just growing vigorously. Now for your cool season lawns, they're not gonna start growing until the ground temps hit 40 degrees Fahrenheit and they really start pushing once the ground temps hit 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Now in your warm season lawns, you're looking at about 65 degrees. Now we've got this transition where the grass is kind of hazy. It's got some dead foliage and we just kind of have to work through that in these lawn diagnostics. Now that we've established our patterns and our colors, we're gonna go next to the water saturation test. Now this is twofold. It's gonna tell us how much water is in the soil, but it's also going to tell us and show us what our soil profile looks like, which is very valuable. Now, this is a great plug, it's fantastic. We've got about six to eight inches of water saturation into the soil, not shocking since it's been raining a lot. It also tells us that we have a high profile of clay. This is, you can make a terracotta pot out of this stuff. It's pretty sticky icky. Um, overall though, uh, the roots seem to be doing well. I'm getting roots uh, all the way down, three to five inches we've got roots and I'm really happy to see that. Nice now white roots, nutrient dense, looks like it's going well. So the interesting aspect is this clay is so thick. It keeps plugging up my, uh, my soil probe. So I'm gonna do, is I'm actually gonna use a screwdriver very lightly. So let's talk about my results in the first two tests. Water saturation's looking really good. Not surprised since we've had a record amount of snow in the valley and it has been continuously raining all the way through April. It's been pretty crazy. I mean, who doesn't like seven months of winter, right? When it comes down to the thatch test, they get a solid F. <laughs> it's really, really bad. Now we're gonna show up to our first pile here and you can see there is a pretty big color difference between this area and this area. The only different thing is, is we've removed all this thatch. Now, if you were to put it all back, you can really see how this would be choking the grass out. The secondary issue that we had, there was no short mow or end of the season mow that occurred that was short enough to prevent snow mold and decaying grass. So we've got dead matter everywhere. Now this itself is starting to turn into snow mold, which we need to get that up. And that way it'll breathe and no more matted grass. Now our final step of the process is the pull test and we do this to check for turf insects. And in this instance, we are negative in turf insects. This is not shocking at all. It is very cold here in the state of Utah, so I don't anticipate seeing any bugs. Now here in the backyard, this thing is a beast and anybody that remotely has any problems like this is going to be very frustrated coming out of the springtime. Now all signs, and I'm gonna kind of walk you through this because this is, this is a little crazy, are starting to show that we have had a flooding or water table problem here in the backyard. Now, when I start looking at these cheetah patterns, 
This is commonly overwatering and or underwatering. Now, if I look at the soil here, you can see it looks like the Mojave Desert. <laughs> but this is a common sign of overwatering. The way that everything is scaling up, I mean, the roots are definitely just tired as tired can be. When we get in here, watch this. It just peels up like sheets of pizza. Now, you could say that this could possibly be grub control. Um, just given my experience and how long I've been in this industry, uh, bugs may have been a correlating factor, but fungus is typically uh, what you're left with is some sort of pythium blight. The bluegrass, you can see it's growing sideways. It's not really growing the way that traditional bluegrass would grow. And again, when it comes to this clump of grass, my, my thoughts on this are, we're, we're just dealing with the last little bits of most likely the shade tolerant uh, species of blue that was in the bag. And uh, all the other species are kind of kind of done for the most part. And we're just left with more of a, a clumping variety, but you can see this uh, rhizome that kind of popped off. It's still doing what bluegrass does. It's just not the common variety that I usually see around these parts. When we get heavy amounts of weeds like this, typically in our region, we're really, really low in potassium and it really allows for a lot of clumping weeds like these biennial dandelions that we've got creeping in here at an alarming rate. All right. So about a two and a half inch plug up top. <laughs> it was pretty low. Um, dare say even this time of the year, it'd be nice to see a little bit more water in the soil. Uh, the clay is not as dense as the front yard, which kind of leads me to believe that when they were building this house this is probably backfill or they brought in some topsoil to create this top area before it kind of went down. So uh, soil probe indicates that density levels are the same and the amount of water in the top level versus the bottom level exactly the same. We actually have some nice decent topsoil back here. This is not the same clay like we have in the front. This is actual topsoil. Let's take a look at the thatch layers here. And the thatch layers actually look pretty healthy. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Now the backyard here has been pretty interesting. Uh, the bluegrass is almost acting like clumping rye grass. And at first I thought it was rye, but it's actually blue. Um, it's just very subsurface. Again, my whole thought process is, is this whole area is just a swamp when it comes to water. Um, right now, the soil saturation levels are showing us we don't have a ton of water, but when I look overall on how it's growing and how stunted it is, it's gonna be an interesting fix. If I were to look into the crystal ball here, <laughs> my guess is this. I know a lot of the times uh, when we get near animal areas like they have here in the back, uh, they'll do flood irrigation that's kind of my assumption, but this is a common sign of overwatering. Now we're looking at overall patterns, right? So we've got this one here. And at the end of the day, it got way too much water over the winter. And it looks like we're dealing with a snow mold issue that has progressed pretty, pretty badly. So this is your root base and you can see literally just coming up like sheets. It was matted down, but this is old. I dare say this started probably November, December, and really just nobody ever did anything about it. Now, when it came out to the thatch test, there really wasn't any thatch. <laughs> I mean, we've got that layer of Kentucky bluegrass rhizomes is kind of peeling out, but as for thatch and debris, not much is pulling out of the grass. I did, however, learn along these sides, somebody did indeed, I thought it was a combination of blue and fescue, it indeed is, but the fescue is kind of taken over. And it's interesting, the fescue is doing well, bluegrass is not doing well. All right, so here's my diagnosis. Front yard has an even distribution of color 
water saturation. Not too concerned about fungus, but I am concerned about the debris on the top layers because we're now getting snow mold. So the game plan is simple. We're gonna thatch it and we're gonna thatch the heck out of it. Ideally, we're gonna wanna thatch it a couple days in a row. After we do the first thatching session, we're gonna put down a fertilizer at one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. On the bag number to get to one pound, it's pretty simple. You're gonna divide 100 by the bag number. So if the bag number is 20, it's gonna be five pounds of fertilizer per 1,000 square feet to get to one pound of N. That's going to force some growth. After we get done doing the dethatching, I want to scarify the front yard since we have an issue with the thatch layer just being a little bit too tight and that debris is kind of stuck in that thatch layer. So if you have a Sun Joe a dethatcher or scarifier or even a Ryobi dethatcher and aerator, you're going to be very happy. It's going to make this job very easy. Sure, you could use a thatch rake, but it is the worst the worst job in the entire world to do. It'll make any CrossFit guy cry after you do that manually. Now when it comes to the backyard, this is a hot, hot mess. My diagnosis is simple. I really just kind of feel like this whole area has been a flooded area. I really think that the groundwater has been kind of coming up and that's something that we're not gonna be able to fix. We could put in a couple of French drains, but that gets expensive. So here's my idea. We noticed that the tall fescue that was in the back is growing just fine. The problem that I have here in my local region of Utah is everybody is spoiled. Everybody's driving Ferraris. Everybody's got Kentucky bluegrass everywhere. And they just think that tall fescue is a weed a lot of times. But in this situation, tall fescue's got 15 inch roots. We live in a water conservation area. I'm thinking that he's hardly gonna have to water this backyard if we put tall fescue back here. It's gonna be environmentally friendly. And Berenbrug has a species called RTF that acts very similar to your Kentucky bluegrass where it self repairs. Now, since watering is not an issue back here, this should stay nice and green. Now to prep the soil, my recommendation is gonna be is to use a scarifier. But first, we wanna make sure that we get the debris off of the top. That may require using that, uh, that thatch rake and scuffing up some of the harder areas that are gonna be a little bit stingy to let the dead matter off of the top of it. Once we get all these areas cleaned up, then we're gonna run the scarifier about three different directions. I wanna do horizontal, vertical, and then another vertical pass as well, or a diagonal pass as well. Then we're gonna use about five to six pounds per 1,000 square feet of RTF, which is rhizomatous tall fescue throughout the entire lawn. And I really think that this is gonna be a good look. The bluegrass is obviously getting chased out of here. So I think within a couple of seasons, uh, the blue is not gonna be as dominant as the fescue. The other option that we'd have for the backyard is just to cook it, nuke it, and start over from clean. Uh, if you were gonna resod this entire area, especially with bluegrass, I truly believe in the next two years, you'd have the exact same problem. It's gonna be all thinned out. So I definitely wouldn't recommend going that direction. Uh, but if you wanted to kill out what is already here, that would be totally fine to starting over. Now I've given you the diagnosis of this lawn and the solutions to fix the lawn. But on this one, I think the ginger is gonna step in and over the next couple of months, I'm gonna show you what it takes to fix this lawn. Stay tuned guys. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit me up in the comments down below. You know I'd love to help you guys out. Till next time guys, this is the ginger. What's wrong with my lawn?